was the night before a non-denominational holiday, when from near and too far, not an engine was peering, not even Graham's car. The motors all parked in garages with care, so as best to protect from the cold winter's air. Graham was nestled all snug in his bed, while visions of spark plugs danced in his head. Snuggled up warm in his winter bed clothes, he was always so grateful for proper repose. Then out on the drive there arose such a roar, Graham sprang from his bed to see what was the score. Away to the window he shot like a hare, tore back the curtains to see what could be there. The streetlights producing an adequate glow allowed him to witness his driveway below. And what to his bleary red eyes did appear, but a white unmarked van that was revving in gear. With a weathered old driver so greasy and slick, Graham knew that this man must be a mechanic. He rang of the bell, Graham opened the door, and he listed the parts he'd been asked to procure. By pinion, by rack, by recirculating ball, by tyres, by jack, by intake manifold. Realign my steering, the tracking is wrong. The size of my arm, the list's just as long. So I've arrived here this eve to work on your car, to give it an oil change and fit a sway bar. So into the garage the two men did tread, with arms laden with parts the mechanic was led. He wore overalls stained and covered with oil, and his hands were all calloused from long years of toil. A box of his tools he placed down on the floor. In the boot of his van, nuts, bolts, gaskets, and moor. His eyes appeared weary, his hairline was thin, his jawline was stubbled, zit sat on his chin. His furrowing brow drew an unbroken line. The wrinkles of his skin marked his passage of time. The butt of a ciggy hung loose from his lips, and the smoke, its smell mingled with fried fish and chips. He had a plain face, and quite the beer gut. Not an inch of his skin was not covered in smut. He was gristled and cold, a right crotchety chap. Well, I'll leave you to it. Graham said with a clap. A snort of his nose and a jerk of his head, as if to agree Graham should go back to bed. He spoke no further word, but went straight to his work, although Graham could have sworn he heard the man mutter, Buck. Through the rest of the night there came banging and clatter, Graham kept up his slumber, the noise didn't matter. Despite all of the ruckus, he slept sound as a log, knowing that come the morning, every screw, every cog, would be perfect and tuned as he always had hoped. Without air suspension, he wasn't sure how he'd coped. And so, come the morning, before breaking his fast, Graham went down to enter the garage at last. And there what he beheld brought a tear to his eye. His chariot was perfect, he couldn't help but cry. Job's a good mate, the mechanic declared. Now there's the matter of the bill, I'm sure you're aware. Graham reacted 
without missing a beat. Toward his gaze from his auto, so the men's eyes would meet. Write up an invoice for parts and labour time. Send the bill to my workplace, it's on company dime.